Hi everyone. Hi Spartans. 24 hours has passed since London South East and I have got back, I have showered, I have slept, I have eaten, uh, my body aches and it is bruised and battered from the events of the weekend. So now with all the uh, information uh, fresh in my mind I thought I would bring you my review of this particular event. Now, before I go any further, before I say anything good or bad about this particular event, I just want to say what a magnificent weekend. Fantastic event, brilliant weather, exceptional Spartan racing across the board. It was everywhere. It was amazing. This video, while I may focus on the odd negative here and there, it does not detract from the overall awesomeness that is Spartan race. So without any further ado, we're just going to get straight into reviewing. So the venue is probably the most logical place to start, Pippingford. It is beautiful, but it is as brutal as it is beautiful. Now the event village is nestled in amongst sort of all the woods, there's several clearings and this is where Spartan Race start and finish. The, the all of the races now the event village had moved ever so slightly from the last time I was there it moved from where the spear throw was uh, to the field it was now um, and a, a slight consequence of doing that is that the event village uh, was smaller noticeably smaller than some of the other sites that we've seen now the consequence of this is when it got busy it, it just meant that there was lots of people in a, such a small space if that makes sense so there was big queues for the toilets big queues for the food vans and vent, uh, vending vans uh, so when this sort of open wave started it, it just got very claustrophobic but it was still laid out really really well um, and it had at its very heart it had the the finishing obstacle which was a meant that it could be spectated from all sides the rig the final rig that has bit sort of featured as the sort of last thing you have to do before crossing the line uh, once again was at the very end uh, and the rig has slightly changed as the season's gone on to make it a little bit more uh, accessible or just to keep people guessing so it's not exactly the same each time. Now the rest of the course uh, obviously comes in a few different flavours. The beast and the super and the sprint. Now what generally happens is either the obstacles are all at the beginning um, and the end which sort of creates the additional miles being done in the middle lump or they can sort of happen at the end so a few obstacles at the beginning and then all the obstacles at the end the 10k and the 5k etc uh, this particular one seemed to hump in the middle so there was maybe 10 obstacles before it sent you to burn off the miles at super or beast uh, and then there was a massive collection of obstacles in that last 10k, 5k, so it topped up the sprint and the super. Um, now, my experience of this particular event started with the beast. Now, this started really furiously. In fact, every race started quite furious because you not you exit and you were running immediately sort of round the corner through the overs, unders, and throughs, straight into the barbed wire, which was horrendous by the way now why I say it was horrendous is as well as being long and uphill as it was the barbed wire was very very low that meant being snagged if you were wearing clothes I was noticing people were getting snagged quite easily people that were shirtless um, they had scratches down their backs it looked like they'd been in a cat fight it was brutal some people were pissing blood and you know it's just just the way of it isn't it it's but they were very low. Even if even you were scraping your nipples on the ground, it was still catching people. In fact, I caught yeah. one guy. He he, um, oh, the, he got, got right in the forehead. I guess he looked oh, up at the exact one. moment <laughs> the barbed wire had, had wobbled, and he got he got spiked directly in the forehead. After that, it was just a sort of round the corner balance beam, uh, Z walls, monkey bars, uh, and then it. It, it then quickly went on to an obstacle that we've not seen before which was the bucket carry over the hay bales now this one was actually okay it wasn't terrible because the the bucket carrying the bucket is harder than putting it down and picking it up putting it down and picking it up if anything the putting it down and picking it up on the hay bales was a little bit of a rest from carrying it uh, and obviously then you have to carry it around the loop and back to the start but the actual hay bales bit wasn't like a great effort in well that's what I felt at the people just going boing 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 over them and then back around shortly after this they sent you 
out and up to your respective filler miles. So if it was beast, you had like seven or eight miles, uh, super three or four miles uh, and sprint just went through the woods. Um, in the beast, um, it kind of went uphill quite a lot. Um, took you right up to the top of the hill where Olympus and Stairway to Sparta were just waiting for you at the top. I got on quite well with them this time. I've come and stuck on both of these obstacles in the past. I sailed through. I think the dry weather and all the handholds and, and grips were just super dry. There was no oil or moisture or greasiness or anything about it. I, I, I felt like I had a good grip all the way across. My feet weren't slipping. I, I dinged the bell and I was away. And then straight up the, the staircase over Sparta. Both those things felt better than they had in the past for me. The course of Beast then just backwards and forwards throughout the Pippinford estate uh, and came to the swim. Now the swim was actually really quite long. It was a uh, out of depth lake and it was quite a long swim. Um, it was noted that a few people were skipping it in the age groups which I thought wasn't allowed. Even though they were offering up life preservers and stuff, there were people running around the lake. Now I didn't think that was allowed but it was definitely noted. I also saw people using the, um, the rope that that strung across the lake. Even though it was several people, several of the other competitors were calling it out, they obviously shouldn't have been doing it. After the swim, it then coursed back around through the woods and eventually popped out at the bottom field. A little bit of running later, you find yourself at the spear throw. And I always take my time to untangle the rope, make sure the rope is on the other side of the fence before throwing as hard as I can at the target. Lucky for me, I got all three amazing um, and then after that you go pick up a sandbag walk it all the way around put it down do the hoist after the hoist you then have to continue with the sandbag and then it's an, a combination of uh, I believe it was the vertical wall and the dunk wall and then the uh, sled drag and then the atlas stones blah 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 until eventually you're back so, in the main field of the event village where there's the a-frame and the uh, rope climb and and various other things oh the chain uh, the chain carry was uh it was a learning experience now no one ever gets to practice carrying a chain and i think it's a bit of luck on when you first pick it up it is really heavy. I've read online since completing this particular event that that weighed 50 kilos and you could easily believe it because it felt heavy. Now what's difficult about the chain is it's hard to maneuver. You can pick up one end of it and start to put it around your neck but then moving it you can't just like feed it over your neck because it's all lumpy and moving and difficult and painful so you kind of have to pick it up in the middle, put it over your neck, put a bit of slack so it isn't pressing directly on your spine and just sort of walk with uh, the sort of tentacle ends of it uh, in front of you. Now, I saw all sorts of people carrying it all sorts of ways, everything from like a baby to dragging it. I saw one guy carrying it, it looked like he was, he had a, like a python over his neck, like this. Um, yeah, it was amusing, because I sat on the, the, the bank and watched all these people try all sorts of different ways to carry this really uncomfortable chain. Now, if you've got it sitting just right with the links, just right over your shoulders, you could walk it around quite comfortably. But if you're unlucky and you placed it on, um, as I did on my third attempt, um, I couldn't get comfy at all with it. I think I was unbalanced. It wasn't in the right place. Yeah. And that made for a very you're painful walk comfy. up and down that hill. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the, chain, the chain carry, while it's not particularly challenging in terms of weight over distance, it's just the sheer uncomfortableness of it. And it's something you can't necessarily run with either because the second you start running, it starts to jangle. Uh, and I did try, and now I feel like my shoulders are bruised as a result of trying, to, trying that. So um, for the most part, people walked with them. After the chain, it was the uh, slippery slope with the rope climb, that was a piece of piss, and then finally back to the rig at the end. Now, all season long I have failed this rig and I've moaned about it on these videos, moan, 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 um, but over the course of this entire season I've figured out most of the obstacles. 
with the exception of the rig. In fact, when I did Beast and when I did Super, I got to that that last commit where you are on the bar and you're trying to swing, you're trying to grab. Uh, I knew I knew for a fact that if I tried to grab the rope, I, the same thing would happen over and over again. I'm, my grip isn't strong enough for my body weight, uh, and I just fall off. So I'd been watching at the sides, uh, noticed that the savvy people were getting a lot of swing, and they made that commit to the ring which was just that little bit further away. Now on my very last time on the sprint, um, this is what I did. I started swinging from the second I grabbed the first rings. I kept that swing going onto the bar. I kept it shuffling along and sure enough it puts that middle ring into grabbing distance and once you've got your hands on that it's just yes, a matter Mark. of smashing the bell. Uh, and so all season I have missed these bells at the end at the very end of the uh, at the very end of the every single event that I've done until the 10th event here at Pippinford at the sprint uh, I, I managed to get through it in fact that uh, the sprint was the the only one that I'd ever done perfectly without getting a penalty of some description this time out there was an ultra running in parallel with the beast now that meant I spent a lot of my time running the beast with ultra runners that were either on their first lap or if they were really good they're probably on their second lap but what uh, I've heard since is that people are complaining that it had been too easy now I, I couldn't quite get my head around this that people were complaining that this obstacle was missing or this obstacle was missing um, but the distance is what makes the ultra hard not the obstacles the obstacles for the most part are kind of just they're not that difficult accomplished experienced spartan races won't batter an eyelid at any of the obstacles they're not like massively challenging the distance is what makes the ultra difficult and if that's not enough you can do it at any speed you like honestly if you just went at something faster it would immediately become harder if you want something more difficult just go faster it's a no-brainer saying that you want another obstacle in the way like that would make it harder it wouldn't it would simply put something there that would take less than 30 seconds to complete that doesn't make it harder 50 kilometers of hillside makes it harder going faster makes it harder a adding twister or bender or any of the other obstacles that might not have been there they don't make it harder distance and pace does one of the things I noticed in the while running the beast is that they obviously needed to burn a lot of extra miles uh, up in the hills and part of this um, ran through quite a lot of uh, vegetation stuff that hadn't really been walked through before so they just marked courses through about vegetation about no no more than this sort of deep the problem is it covers the ground almost completely so you can't see underneath you can't see what's there so as you're running along it's in in your mind you know that if there's a rabbit hole or a log or a stone or a hole anything that you're going to roll an ankle and on more than one occasion i nearly went over in fact several times in fact where i'd, I'd rolled an ankle and just righted myself in time I know for a fact, looking on social media, that several people ended up in hospital with busted ankles and had leg braces on and various other things, and that's likely to have become, uh, that's likely to have happened as a result of not quite knowing where to put your feet at, in some of these instances. You can't just take the brakes off and, and, and just run as fast as you can because you can't see where you're putting your feet. And I had to slow up a few times as a result of that, that which meant burning a lot of extra time running up sort of these heath covered hillside uh, segments um, and I didn't particularly like that I like to be able to see where my feet's going and, and you know get a bit of flow in my run and that kind of just stifled all that obviously if you're podium uh, chasing then you have to be a little bit bolder and a little bit braver but I wanted to complete the weekend with both my ankles intact so uh, yeah I had to ease off the gas a little bit at those bits. This particular event saw the absence of the regular style photography right as someone who likes to take pictures and re really appreciates event photography at other events it's always been a bit sad when you get a picture of a bucket carry and a really poor fire log jump right nearly all of the time the fire log jumps are just a bunch of logs not on fire right and you just get your picture whoo not good 
and the bucket carriers are probably one of the most unphotogenic obstacles that there are. There's so many more greater places where you can position yourself to get great action shots. You look at pictures that come from the Americas or the European events, they've got cameras everywhere and their photos are amazing. And for at least two, three seasons, Spartan have done exactly the same thing every single time. Bucket carry, fire lock, bucket carry, fire lock. Oh, but they're free, but they're free, but, yeah, but they're rubbish. They're free because they're rubbish. So, this time around, Sportograph have stepped in and there was a massive change to where you could see the photographers. In fact, they were everywhere. There were all, all the wet obstacles, there were all the climbing obstacles, they had auto traps set up, flash guns, um, they, you know, long lenses, they, you know, they were everywhere. You could see them, they were very visible and the photos have already started to become available. And with the codes, they've come down to a very respectful price for all of your pictures. It's not like you've got like 10 or 20, you'd likely have got 60, 70, 80. If you've done both days, you're likely to have 150 or thereabouts. So value for money, I think it's worth it to get all of your pictures. I think because they are such good quality, they've got you on the best obstacles at critical points, like being the bell or jumping or coming out the water or carrying something hard and difficult. I've got pictures from High Rocks. They are sportograph as well and I always buy their packages because the photos are brilliant. They make you look great. So before people start moaning about having to pay for photos, they were crap before. Now they're amazing. It's worth paying for. A couple of minor things I noticed that weren't cool. Um, the armor carry, right? This, uh, this featured predominantly in the, I think the Ultra, the Beast, but not the shorter courses. I think it featured in the Champs as well. The problem with the armor carry is that it wasn't marshaled. So people were just making it up as they went along, okay? You could easily have just bypassed it and no one would have said anything. Two, there was only six male stones. And when I got there, there was three or four people deep waiting for stones. Okay, so that's already two, three minutes I'm having to wait for my go at an unmarshaled point without a penalty. So that didn't seem right to me. If you can't do it right, don't do it at all. That shouldn't have been there or it should have been done right. The problem came when some bright sparks thought I'm not waiting for my stone, moved over to the ladies and picked up two of the ladies stones and walk them. Now while this may have seemed like a logical thing to do to skip the queue, almost immediately when all those ladies stones had been taken, the first lady showed up and was like, where's all the female stones? She just wanted to run her race at the best of her ability and the second she got to something that required a female weight, it had been taken by guys trying to rush the queue. So that wasn't cool. And that could have all been fixed it needn't have happened if they'd put more stones in a better place and were marshalled. This was the last event in my season ticket. If you'd bought a season ticket at the start of the year, you'd likely have been to most of the events because it, it was the most cost-effective way to, to attend them all. Uh, so that meant that as I had done the, the first one, uh, I think it was the London South West and then um, we did the Midlands and then there was the standalone beast in Gloucester and then finally the London South East. It meant that as you went you were accruing these little pouches uh, which are the times two times three. So now I now have my times two times three patches that will go on my bag and nice little baggy and you get a nice times three medal uh, which you can add to your fantastic array of weekend bling. So one, two, three, four, five medals plus the trifecta segments that build the, the you know, the trifecta medal. Um, so yeah, the bling you get from each of the trifecta weekends is literally second to none. In fact, all of these medals, um, I'm going to need to widen my rack because the 2023 haul from Spartan Race has consumed about this much space on my medal rack. 
I just want to say thank you to everyone involved in the organising side of it. Thank you to the marshals and the officials. Um, I want to say well done to every single person that put themselves through it this weekend. It doesn't matter what distance you did, uh, whether it be the sprint, the super, the beast, the ultra or the kids. You all did fantastic. You are all officially Spartans now and forever. Uh, the All of you guys on the uh, page, the Facebook page, this UK Spartans Facebook page, um, Thank you for watching my videos and a massive thank you to uh, the sort of dozen people that tapped me on the shoulder and said, hi Martin, how are you doing? I watch your videos. Uh, it's so sweet when that happens. I, I turn a bit shy and a bit goofy in those moments because I don't quite know what to say. Uh, but it was lovely to speak to all of you and I'm very pleased that you all are willing to do that and strike a conversation about something we all love doing. It was really appreciated. So um, I'll leave the, this particular video here. Uh, I will be making a race day video uh, over the coming days. I just wanted to get this one done and out while everything's still fresh in my mind. Thank you for watching this video. Please give the channel a subscribe and I'll see you soon. Mart out.